Yo guys, welcome to the last lap. Don't forget to drop a lovely juicy five star rating if you're watching an Apple podcast or Spotify. Hope you enjoy and let's get into it. Welcome back to the last lap podcast first post-race edition yes. of the 2023 season. We've been waiting for so long. Uh, the race is done. Bahrain's finished. We're here still with Dan and Hayden from the stream. Boys, thank you for staying around. Thank you for hanging about. That's right. um, You're welcome. What do we think of the race first and foremost, just as a whole, first race of the season? Disappointed. Where were your expectations relative to, to what we thought was going to happen? I think average i don't think i'm disappointed but i don't think i was really that excited after that race obviously i'm glad that f1's back i'm very happy about that but i think you know there's just a bit of a lack of a fight at the up of the front red bull done an incredible job they've you know improved on their car to make it unstoppable at the moment max verstappen in that car as well so far ahead of the field so cracking job for them but unfortunately from a viewer's perspective you know it's a little bit Made the, made the race a little bit worse. And I just don't think there was as much overtaking. They changed the DRS zone coming into this race, reducing yeah. it. And I feel like it made less overtakes in the race because of that, unfortunately. So I think a five, a, a mid race. Yeah, I, I, it was it was all right. I, I think, yeah, the, the lack of sort of action at the front almost in terms of like a, f a fight for a win, for example. I mean, Verstappen literally checked out after like two, two mm. laps. He was like four seconds clear, three laps in. Um, there were some decent battles through the field here and there. Obviously, Leclerc's retirement as well. Had a little bit of spice. Fernando Alonso kind of injected some spice all on his own, really, into the top six. Um, yeah, probably like a five and out of ten, I reckon. Well, that's overall. The, yeah. You, the, you wind back to the start, and you know Fernando lost position. Charles got ahead I mean, of Checo. Very different race, by the way. If Stroll had actually collected Fernando Alonso, oh yeah, make contact. That's sh should we should we talk about that first? Actually, yeah, you know. I asked what? Don't what, try and mud my boy, right? Yeah. No, 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 no. Drag him in the mud straight yeah, away. No, no. I see what he's doing. Let's see it. Let's see no, no, no. Let, let's just talk about Aston Martin collectively, right? <laughs> because there was a lot of hype going into this race. Train. A lot of expectation. Fernando did get on the podium in the end, obviously benefiting from Charles Leclerc breaking down. Um, but all in all, Dan, I think they can be, your, your old mate Dan Fellows, ex-Red Bull, yep. can be pretty happy with the job he's done so far, right? Yep, he's he's laughing with all of his uh, tracings he did <laughs> and uh, notes he took. But no, yeah. no, it's, it's good to have Aston, a team outside of the regulars, have genuine pace mm. and sort of up there. It's probably the most exciting part about this race was seeing a, a team that you're not usually used to seeing up there. So yeah, no, I mean, the hype train, as much as I was the conductor of it, realistically, I don't think they were ever going to like steal the win out of it, but... It's more of a hype DLR. Yeah, I hear that. Okay, yeah. I hear that. Tram. The hype, <laughs> hype tram. <laughs> yeah. Tram. Hype tram. The hype <laughs> tram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But, um, you know, they are quick enough to be a fawn in the side of Ferrari and Mercedes, I think. Well, in, in terms of a race car, I mean, Fernando passed um, Lewis you know, on pace mm -hmm. and science, obviously struggling with tire management yeah, as well. Like it's good on his tires. Yeah, I mean, he's oh, currently sat P second in the constructors. Lance picking up mm -hmm. big points as well, P6 as well, which I think deserves that, not f joking around, like he genuinely deserves a lot of credit for that P6 with the injuries he had to be as close as he, because he wasn't a mile off Fernando as well. Like that mm -hmm. you got to remember that as well. I, th I think your boy mm -hmm. pulled through Hayden. Half a second off throughout the whole weekend in terms of practice sessions, qualifying. So I think a solid result, you know, looking back at where he was two weeks ago in surgery with no arms, basically. Um, <laughs> so the yeah, arms. I mean, a good result. And then in the race as well, he beat one of the Mercedes, was catching up to Hamilton at the end, but I don't think it was ever going to be on the cards to Ram get the overtake. Really. Yeah, maybe yeah. if Science and Hamilton actually had a bit of a battle, yeah, yeah. maybe, maybe, but... You know, it didn't happen at the end of the day. And Aston Martin, they've, they've built an incredible car and are a team, because we saw it last season where the likes of Alfa Romeo, Haas, were getting in that kind of mix because Mercedes dropped the ball when they were a little bit off pace. But Aston Martin, looking at last year, I believe that they can go on and improve from here. Whereas unfortunately for Alfa Romeo and Haas, as the season went on, the results were just kind of tailing off. Well, that's the thing, because can Aston Martin keep up this momentum? It's all well and good starting the season well. Like, I mean, I'm not being funny. A Haas finished P5 last season, um, and then they would, you know, it, it wasn't necessarily 
yeah, you can have good pace at the start of the year, but can you carry that on? But, you know, you made this point during the stream, they've still not had their big, massive new facility yet. They've still got all that to come. So for them to already be punching, I don't think anyone, any many Aston Martin fans in their wildest dreams could have expected them to be this quick, this quickly, I would say, as well. Yeah, yeah. But I think there's absolutely no reason why they can't build on it and continue. They've got the money, obviously. Um, they've said, you know, they've got the resources and that. Yeah, why not? They got the advantage of extra wind tunnel time over the people they're fighting. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, because they were seventh in the constructors last year, so that's a hundred percent of the mm -hmm. allocation. Yeah, so there's more developments to come. Like, I'm and funny the, the thing is as well, like um, last season, the development was actually very solid. Like, if you again, if you look at where Aston were at the start of the year, you know that car was a bathtub. Mm -hmm. I'll be totally honest with you. But by the end of the season, we get to Austin, and you know on pace the first half of that Grand Prix they were sort of I think they were sitting fifth and sixth in the race obviously with the, the incident with Science and Russell and whatever but like genuinely they were best of the rest in America yeah and it's also worth pointing out as well Aston Martin's biggest upgrade last year was to the photocopier <laughs> so they could get the uh, Red Bull <laughs> side pods and whatnot. So. Well, it's funny because last year when all the green Red Bull stuff was coming out and the new side pods and kind of everyone like, had a laugh and a joke, but then in the race, I think they were like nowhere. Mm -hmm. But obviously now you're like, oh, okay. Well, clearly they, I mean, because they've hired, it's not just, I think they signed Luca Fabato from Alfa Romeo. They've signed a bunch of Mercedes staff as well. Um, it's been part of a broader like scheme to, to, to make this team at least the team which I think the, the best thing I got from this is that yeah, and whether Mercedes are going to be able to challenge it we'll talk about that in a bit I'm sure but like it's almost it feels like it's made that top four sorry top three a yeah, top four potentially mm. which I think is the most exciting prospect to come of it because you've got four cars that can potentially during these 23 races you know Bahrain's very it's a very unique track very mm. high degradation you know Ferrari might do better on lower deck tracks you yeah, think yeah. it's like if you can have four different teams that can all merit fight for a race win then yeah we joked that last year Aston copied the homework but didn't understand the assignment whereas now it's like they actually understand the assignment as well yeah, so like it it's, clicked yeah. <laughs> yeah you can't just copy a car and understand it and be quick mm. you know but now it seems everything's falling into place Mm. it's looking good are you happy Hayden as, as, a, as a large happy. strong I'm fan very, where are your uh, expectations my expectations are my hopes and my dreams are a lot higher than my expectations they're yeah. through the roof they're Lance Stroll you know if we saw in that video that they, he did you know Lance Stroll world champion 2023 could happen no it's not going to happen do it in his accent in my head in my dreams it will 2023 <laughs> 2024 <laughs> uh, yeah I think a lot of it comes down to this this time in the wind tunnel as well because like you said they're going to have 100% Red Bull have got that penalty so by the end of the season that's when we're going to see the catching up of the teams who have more time in the wind tunnel start to actually take place so you know I think Aston Martin can generally get in that fight for maybe even second place depending on whether Ferrari you know drop the ball Continually, continuously because on pace today at the end of the race Alonso was right would have been right on the back of Leclerc I think had Leclerc not DNF'd mm -hmm. so he was in that fight and Lance Stroll when he is back to 100% it's not going to be on Alonso's level but I think that he can be you know a little bit off him but still be able to back him up and be in that fight as well and potentially even take it to the Ferraris yeah well, if Aston Martin can do what Mercedes did last year by like not being as quick as Ferrari necessarily but always being reliable, mm. always finishing the races and benefiting when other people drop the ball. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. If they want to mount a, it's one race, but you could definitely see a constructors P2 come in. If, if they can be consistent, do I think they're going to be as quick as Ferrari on like one lap pace and all that? Not necessarily, but qualify. You don't win points in, on the Saturday, do you? At the end of the day. So I think, I think there's room to grow, but I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic. Yeah. Same. It was also very close. I think between a lot of the, the, the top order in qualifying. Yeah, yeah it, was. So it was. It was. It's not even like it's it was. Like a, oh yeah, they were like six tenths off mm -hmm. the Ferraris, but they they're just like the best of the rest. Like there is genuine pace there. 
like to actually match Ferrari too. So. Yeah, Aston the two Alonso and the two Mercs were both six tenths off of uh, Verstappen. I oh, yeah. Verstappen. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, were the Ferraris were they Ferraris three were like four? three, four yeah, tenths down. Yeah. So yeah, they're close in that fight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's the thing. I think the additional reliability they'll probably have might overcome Ferrari, who, who once yeah. again broken down in a race engine issue by the sound of it for Charles. Slow batalon. <laughs> <sighs> Mate, some things never. Ferrari's <laughs> back. Fred might have come in, but it doesn't change overnight no um, yeah. I, heard, I heard he built the engine <laughs> maybe <laughs> I, heard, I heard it was him I heard <laughs> he was up in the early hours of the night well there's all this talk about like reliability you can bring reliability upgrades you can't bring performance upgrades and then to have this happen and Charles was looking for a comfortable P3 mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. I mean maybe Alonso would have got close at the end but yeah it's, more of the same, isn't it, for the Tafosi? Sorry if any of you are watching, but it's, it's yep. not good, is it, Brev? Yeah, support group round at hours tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Open any time. But it wasn't even that. It's like the fact that science's pace fell off as well. I was going to say, surely, is, is that like probably the most, one of the most concerning things? You know, breakdown happens at There's any time. There's two big worries you know, there. Reliability, obviously, mm -hmm. is a big worry, but you it can just be a one-off, whatever. But for tyre wear and pace to drop off that significantly in comparison to like everybody else, surely that's a concern. Definitely. I mean, I think Ferrari have dropped the ball this season because last year, yeah, okay, their race pace wasn't as good as Red Bull, but their qualifying pace was. Mm -hmm. They got so many pole positions, you know, arguably, they got so many pole positions, 24 wins, that it was actually really disappointing for them. But this Wait, year... Charles got nine, Max got seven. Yeah. So and then mental. this year, they're, what, three, four tenths off of the Red Bull at the first race it's not looking good. It is a step back for them. Mm. Well, like you said, like well, first... they, they didn't even bother, did they? <laughs> can't, I can't hear that phrase now. <laughs> I'm just, sorry, they on. didn't even bother, did they, with uh, Charles's second flying lap? Because no. they, they were like, oh, we'll just save the set of soft tyres. And then Charles locked up in, in like lap three or yeah. something. Because that was the thing, like you, you were saying, like within the first, what, six laps, Max mm. was about seven seconds ahead, yeah. Of, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. ahead of Charles. So it's kind of... Well, that, was, that was simple. I, I don't remember seeing that... Certainly in the first half of the season, there wasn't many Red Bull wins like that one. Yeah. Where it was 25 seconds mm -hmm. back to, or it was like 10 seconds back to Perez and then another 25 seconds back yeah. to anyone else. That's crazy. It was back and forth between them. Mm -hmm. Bahrain, Max versus Leclerc fight. Yeah. Saudi, they had a fight. Yeah. Australia, they were battling closely and then Max had the engine issue. So yeah, it was a close fight and now it's just... Do you think... Ferrari's chance at a championship before the 26 regulations is now been and gone because I feel like last year they could have fought like if they hadn't have had the whether they would have beaten Max and Red Bull at the end even without all of the strategy fuck ups I don't know but it feels like based off what we again it's one race but yeah like I, I do worry that that ship sailed now and that chance has, has gone to really fight with to catch up to Red Bull and fight with them uh, yeah I, I don't think it's gone completely I mean they got issues with tyre wear across you know race distance but you, you can tune that and tune for it in terms of your suspension and things like that it's not like they're fighting for 10th or fighting for points but it's just Red Bull looks that good though but the they old that you good. know with with reduced wind tunnel time and things like that is it going to play into Ferrari's hands you know but then you've got the problem is as well you've got Aston Martin up there now as well as Mercedes and Mercedes outscored Ferrari in the second half of last year yeah. you look at the momentum Aston Martin have got now and seemingly they were you know on par obviously mm -hmm. Charles was ahead of, of Alonso before pulling up but this is the problem as well it's not like you know Ferrari haven't just got to worry about Mercedes now being behind them and and, and you know, Red Bull being ahead, there's now another team potentially <clears throat> like in the fight. And that's part of the problem. That's yeah. another team to take points away from you. Yeah, I think looking at last year as well, I think out of the top three teams from last year, Ferrari were probably the worst at developing a car throughout the season. Now, Aston Martin developing a car last year will be different to this year because they're going up against the likes of Alfa Romeo, Haas, who don't quite have the budget. Hmm. These three teams at the top all have the budget. So I know how and the know-how yeah. and the people in the right places so I think you know they can may I, I personally think Aston Martin can outdevelop, but I don't think it'll be to a massive stage where they're going to be top of the board by the end of the season but yeah Ferrari do need to be looking over their shoulder at them especially at that difference in wind tunnel time because it is big Ferrari have been on the back foot since the technical directive in Spa about the old bendy floors came in mm. and since then they've been a bit off the boil so I think they're still struggling with that. 
hence the compromises they're having to make, which is affecting their tyres. But if they could figure that out, then why not? If. A little bit of hope for the Tifosi there. <laughs> a, li- a little bit, just a smidgen. Yeah. Co- co- from me, so it's co- probably not worth much. Co- I was going to say, yeah, a, bit of a bit of copium. No, but like, we said it before, we said this word many a time, ominous is mm. what Red Bull look. Yeah. Not only, you know, Max winning by as long as he did, but Perez getting the move done. And even though he lost out at the start, he was able to get that move done and then pulled a good, I think, 10 seconds on Charles before Charles conked out at the end of the day. So, so Red Bull were looking like they're looking hot. Yeah. And their car looks decent as well. Um, yeah, no, it's... it's, it's um, <laughs> what? Wait, uh, what? That, the energy drink looks hot. Sorry, you know, next question. Um, <laughs> so, like, what? <laughs> no, but yeah, I, I, it, is, it is scary, man. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I, I, as I said, literally, you just didn't get many races like that last season, you know, where Red Bull just kind of took off. That was it. You know, obviously, it was, yeah, there was Belgium where Max came through the field and, and things like that. But for a first Grand Prix of the season, that's a... That's a statement, mate. What's the mood mood in the team as far as you're aware, Dan? Is there like a quiet confidence there? Yeah, absolutely, 100%. I think they're on cloud nine at the minute and I think today's race will probably only confirm that. Um, You know, especially like we're saying, it's, it's one thing to have Max pull away from everyone and take the top step, but to have Checo, you know, near enough, not outright pace but to be comfortably taking the second you mm. know it's like the whole um mercedes hamilton and bottas all over again isn't it where they're just continuously locking out one and one and two all year long possibly. yeah because i mean show outscored checo last year it feels like from what we saw in that race anyway that you know if, if checo can close that gap to max he was much closer to max in q1 q2 and q3 he was within you know a tenth and a half mm-hmm. two and a half tenths tenth and a half and that's the thing checo needs to keep this gap relatively low but also it's like based off what we saw it feels like maybe the scrap is more between uh mercedes aston martin and ferrari and red bull it almost feels like they they could quite easily be like off on their own, kind of like Mercedes in the glory days. And yeah. that, from Checo's point of view, is good because then there's less pressure for him to be super close to Max because you know they they might have that car advantage. Again, you hope with the and maybe with the wind tunnel penalty, mm. like you say, if that's going to take more note later in this season and next season, then maybe there's some hope. But like, I don't think. We, Regardless, it doesn't matter if it's Red Bull or whoever. Like, we don't want to see anyone running away with the championship mm-hmm. at the start. No. But it, it was a perfect start for Red Bull, wasn't yep. it? Yeah. you got you got to be happy with that. Pretty much, it. what, 20 points clear, constructors championship already. Mm-hmm. Take that to the bank, or max, slap that down. Almost maximum points, because yeah. Joe got fastest lap. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was just unnecessary, by the way. He, li- he literally... <laughs> we that took was away just... from Alpine, which I wouldn't say is unnecessary oh, true, true because actually, if they end up fighting yeah. with Alpine at the end of the season and it's not a bad and I think that's a very valid fight that could happen I think mm. in terms of pace you know similar every point well, counts especially exactly. in that field not midfield yeah not, yeah. we've established field. ladies and gentlemen it's not a midfield it is just a field because yeah. it's it's right at the end it's Red Bull everyone and then McLaren <laughs> yeah <laughs> speaking of which um, we spoke about probably the the best possible weekend for Red Bull probably up there with one of the worst possible weekend well it somehow managed to go worse than last year Bahrain Mm -hmm. yeah Um, just don't bother coming (laughs) Bahrain Mm. just um, just just for next season just because it might be heartache just go again from (laughs) just start in Saudi Arabia it's fine well well, both cars save the air (laughs) yeah <laughs> that's the thing both cars had issues yeah. I guess that's the thing it's like Piastri changed the wheel and it didn't fix whatever yeah, was the problem gearbox was problem for him in the end I think he was complaining of gearbox steering and, wheel and, just, mm-hmm. and then Lando yeah was get, having to get topped up with with air air throughout the race <laughs> which we've seen that before haven't we I think with other teams but yeah yeah that's, that's definitely a thing I mean that's a race that's just a constant race killer mm-hmm. like yep yeah, sorry lad uh, especially as it happens so early because yeah if it's happening that early on then you know if it happens 10 laps in surely you're going to have to do it again in another 10 laps yeah but we were talking about about five times because yeah. like during the stream we were saying that you know this time last year McLaren had a stinker at Bahrain yeah but then like four races later at Imola they got a podium. Yeah. So, is the are we? Is it like you know, baby out of the bathwater? Is like is this a bit too much of an overreaction, or is it actually looking that bad for McLaren? Um, I, I mean, at least last year when the car wasn't cooking its brakes or setting them on fire, at least it looked like it had pace. Whereas this time round, it doesn't even look like it has pace, mm. and it's unreliable. So, you know, 
you can make a unreliable fast car reliable. Yeah. But not necessarily a slow, unreliable one fast. <laughs> and if anyone like, followed on, that and successfully <laughs> managed to decode that, then congratulations, you're today's winner. Because <laughs> um, Lada put it P11 in qualifying, obviously, you know, matched with Logan. So he was quite fortunate not to get knocked mm -hmm. out in Q1, but he got through. And, yeah. you know, I, I think when he put the mediums on, he was kind of following that. Hamilton Alonso well, battle, Alonso battle or yeah, Hamilton science science battle. as well. I, I just, yeah, I think it's like what Dan said. I've just been more concerned because of the, the lack of pace as well. At least if the car was unreliable or whatever. And I, and I said actually earlier, I didn't know if this Bahrain was worse than last year because even though they didn't finish last year, they were, they were literally just last. <laughs> like that was just a fact of the man. It didn't matter whether they were reliable or not. They were just last. <laughs> yeah. And that wasn't the case this time. They definitely weren't the slowest car out there. Um, you know, Piastri was firmly in the midfield, but even still Lando was dropping back a little bit in that first. And, you know, he started 11th, got overtaken, I want to say a couple of times. And then... Oh yeah, because mm -hmm. Albon got past him. Yeah, Sergeant exactly. was... Do you start, I can't remember who was it, I, who was, I can't remember who was in between Albon and Sargent but whoever that was overtook him as well um, some of that might have been down to his leaky air though yeah true because that will affect the engine performance yeah that's the thing it's, on a straight line, that's, the, that's what I'm saying it's like yeah it looks really bad is it really as bad as it looks that's we don't know the, the only other question, thing is though. last year the problem with Bahrain last year for McLaren was that they didn't really understand the car and yet yeah, the brakes were like 17,000 degrees mm. Celsius. Mm -hmm. So, whereas this time it's actually just, it's not, we don't have new regulations this season. Mm -hmm. It's not as much of it's an just, excuse. Yeah, it's not, you can't not understand your, you have to understand your car at least a little bit because you, this is an evolution of last year's car. So that I don't think you will see that steep increase in performance necessarily like you did last year, but just because mm. of that, I don't know. Have we not had Zach or Lando sort of come out and say, yeah, the car's wrong. We've gone down the wrong direction as well, which probably <sighs> doesn't inspire much confidence. Mm. That's the problem. It's like, you look at how Aston Martin turned it around from being right at the back of the pack last year, at the start of the year anyway, and now they're right at the top. Like you were saying this during the stream, Dan, it's like they're running out of excuses now, really. You look at 2020, they were quicker than Ferrari. They were up there with Ferrari at least. Um, and now they're, I don't know, there's been, been a big stumble in the road. Mm. You look at, what, again, what Aston Martin are achieving. It's not looking good. Yeah. I not looking you, good, Brev. Yeah, you said, for that. You said like it down where they need to be called out because... Yeah, they. I mean, back in 2012, they were winning races and they were up at the front fighting for championships just mm -hmm. a little bit before then. And they've just dropped off massively since then, never been able to return. And unlike a Williams, who are another team who were once back in the day fighting for championships, McLaren have a budget. McLaren have money. Like, they're not just some little farmer's team running and around at the back. And facilities they've as well. They've got Kindles yeah. on the side of the car with different sponsors. Well, like, they've got the money. them down. <laughs> that is, yeah, no. Upsetting yeah. the center of gravity. It's <laughs> to realize they should not have an Excel spreadsheet on the side of yeah. the car. That's the problem. <laughs> Look, that, and that's the thing. All, all that marketing is good. stickers weighing yeah. it down. Yeah. If, if it. you're fighting at the front, then it's, it's great. But unfortunately, it doesn't, like... I, and I just I, look. We've talked about this before with Lando. Where does he see his future? Blah blah blah. And, and the questions. I'm sure he's getting a bit sick of it. But it's like, well, it's valid because he's done what he can in that car. I don't feel like <coughs> he can he can prove much more in that. And it's like, does he? What well, he's 24 now. However old he is, um, you know. F1's all about decision making, making the right moves at the right times. You know, you can, certain drivers made moves at right times and, you know, inherited cars that, uh, you know, w could win them championships and, and others moved at the wrong time. And, you know, Fernando's always cited as being one of these drivers who's moved arguably at the wrong time or made the wrong decisions. He's pulled a worldie at going to Aston Martin mm, by the yeah, looks of it. Anymore. But, yeah, <laughs> yeah and, and exactly. Finally. But, you know, there's, there, I think there's, there is pressure on Lando I'm sure he feels it more than anyone that, you know to like make the right call here does he stick it with McLaren or does he twist does he pick a different alley to go down and does that deliver him a world championship car yeah I think the one thing he's maybe looking at is they are bringing a new wind tunnel and a little bit of upgrades to facilities so potentially that could help them get a little bit further up but yeah where he's been they kind of kind of gone up, up a little bit then back down and up and down and for him I think he could be looking at maybe that Red Bull seat for me that Red Bull seat could be opened up if 
there is a constructors championship battle at the end of the season and Perez being you know not quite there with Verstappen is the weak link and loses them a constructors championship that maybe Red Bull might look at it or there's a fallout again in that relationship between Max and Perez where it is unworkable in that team they could be looking around and I said before that I think Ricardo would go in there that's why they put him in that third driver role that reserve driver role so maybe look if we do need someone to step in Ricardo's a great choice for that we know that him and Verstappen can get along well they can work okay until they crash with each other of course yeah just don't mention Baku yeah, don't yeah, mention yeah, Baku. yeah. or Hungary <laughs> I've got my shirt at home that says I survived the Baku deep <laughs> <laughs> but I think now maybe that's looking at Landon Norris because I thought that McLaren would be still up in that you know P5, P4 fight yeah. the fact that they're nowhere near it and if that's happening every single season how many times until you get tired of that? No, that's, that's what I was going to ask really like what if you're, if you're Lando like what is workable with at McLaren like what does McLaren have to achieve this season for you to go I'm willing mm-hmm. to stay here oh. and, I think it, and I think it's well above what it is right now I know he's got a contract until 2058 this, this upgrade they're talking about for Baku potentially like this has to has turn to, it into I feel like, like it's got to be yeah that's the bit of make best break. car like, yeah. it has to at get least yeah. at least up there with like where it looks like maybe Alpine or yeah it at, le- at least has to propel them to best of the rest because otherwise... if you're not best of the rest then what's the point you were best of the rest before yeah and even that is a stepping stone to okay cool yes now you then you should be fighting for wins regularly if you can't even become best of the rest if you can't even be best of the rest anymore then and again, when a team, the team in green's proven, it can be done. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's not like it's just out of, it's very easy to think, oh, Mercedes, Ferrari, Red Bull, that's just the standard. That's always going to be the top three. Mm. But teams can break into it. Like, no one's infallible. Like, they're all, you know, they're just teams of individual people making a car. Mm-hmm. And if you can assemble the right people, and that's where, I do think, like, the Red Bull move for Lando, it's like, I don't know, it, Part of it is, you know, if Checo can carry on do, being as close as he was this weekend, then maybe yeah, not. Yeah, door shuts. Mm-hmm. But it also, it's like, if if they don't take Lando, then someone else maybe gets Lando. And then there's... But where? I don't see any other place for next season. Ferrari's, you know, whilst Charles Leclerc yeah. and Carlos Sainz might be getting frustrated there, Ferrari's one of those teams that there is potential for it to turn around like they have done in recent years mm-hmm. to stay there. Mm-hmm. Mercedes, I don't see Lewis Hamilton leaving unless there is something like, for me, it's if Alonso does somehow retire in the next two years, then Hamilton might look at that as an option. But there's a seat not opening at Mercedes if, either. Yeah, if, you, if you're Lando, like realistically, you're just waiting on a retirement, I think. It's, whether it's Lewis or whether it's Fernando, mm-hmm. a Mercedes seat is going to be available in my eyes in in two years from now they'll mm. probably be Mercedes CEO yeah and but there is a young driver coming up called Kimi Antonelli who yeah. Mercedes are looking at very hotly he's so very young though well he's going he's frecker so F3 next year F2 and then that's when Lewis Hamilton could move on from the F2 into Mercedes if he is that hot shot that he's tipped to be. I don't know. Mercedes don't like just thrusting people in at the deep end though. So that, that would rely on him winning what he's in now, then winning F3 or being competitive, then winning F2 or being competitive and then boom, he's immediately in a Mercedes. Mm. And obviously with George, they just slapped him in a Williams for a mm. couple of years and then you know, let him prove himself. Mercedes haven't got that dog in them. Yeah, they don't. No, they don't. Not like they've Helmut got, Marco. They've got a car. They've got a car. <laughs> I'm 12 getting the fucking car. <laughs> they've got that gerbil in them, Mercedes. So so. That's the, well, we, you mentioned um, Williams. We know that Piastri's, you know, he's, he's two, the two paths. He could have stayed with Alpine, gone to Williams for maybe one year, maybe more. Depends on how long they would have kept Fernando um, and then got in that way. And I mean, Williams, you know, P10, P12, Sergeant on debut as well. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's almost like they, well, they certainly, this race, they were quicker than the McLarens. Yeah, I think they look strong. I mean, for Piastri, that choice between Alpine or, or McLaren was just kind of like, which arm do you want chopped off, basically? So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just swank <laughs> by the way, and it's terrible. It's shocking. Like, yeah. What colour overalls do you hate the least? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know what's good to like, because Vowles has only just taken charge as well. Mm-hmm. And the fact that, you know what, like... They don't have a technical director there. Yeah, they, do they? Have, they got rid of FX and... Um, mm. Oscar Pito and look credit to them because they're the ones who got this car into this position um, hopefully Vows can can push on but 
I think with Williams, it was always like expectations were quite low. And mm -hmm. maybe some of this is track dependent as well because I think they were... Or better in qualifying than in race. Uh, Albon was saying if he didn't have his front wing, he could have maybe flirted with Q3 as well. Um, we weren't very good at Bahrain no, last year. I don't remember. I don't remember. I'm pretty sure it was just them and McLaren down. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think so, you're right. But, I don't think it's necessarily a track that like properly suits them like historically. Well, they had the biggest improvement in testing relative to last year because mm. it's, it's all just relative everyone's improving mm. like it's just how much are you improving com well, compared you to the that next Alpine were the only one that set a slower lap time in true the but they didn't put a soft on did they no they I kept it get mid Alpine they kept it mid fair enough yeah, no, <laughs> they were hard throughout that whole test mm. they were hard yeah mm. hard watch hard watch mm. yeah no, but I'm, yeah. Look, it was not, a hard watch if you're not Alpine just because I'm an Albon <laughs> fan but I, I think seeing the name of Williams they've been at the foot of the table for far too long and, mm. I, and I feel like it's one of those seasons that you know if it is a top four and then the rest you could go from P6 to P10 in the constructors in one bad race mm. potentially which is quite exciting for, for the rest of the field yeah and Williams have got about £10 worth of investment in them because they're owned by a capital investment fund and going to them and saying oh can we have an extra £10 million, please maybe we'll get some extra points out of it well they'll say no you can't unless it's guaranteed you're going to end up so they are struggling but you know to see them go up there with such a small budget good on them yeah, yeah that's that's a, and because they haven't got that many sponsors it's not like they're a team laden with you know no, it's not like a McLaren or an Alfa Romeo money didn't they <laughs> yeah, like sweet, yeah sweet Nutella money <laughs> Indeed, they bought. I think they bought one a few sponsors. I remember when I was there. I think that Stevens that's on the side. They're like an American mm. investment bank or something. So I think he's Gold. helped yeah. some guy called Stephen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And this so is our F2. new sponsor, Big Steve. <laughs> <laughs> so that F two car that has someone's face on the side. Yes, that's what they yeah, need. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but shout like Logan as well. Like Logan, really good job. That like, first race wasn't mm -hmm. that far off Alex. And I think again, we said this in the. He's already passed the better than the Tifi test with flying yeah. flying colours. Yeah, yeah. Can't believe Again, it. <laughs> All the Tifi he pretty much just had to be on time. I think to do like the first briefing, probably. Do so you know where the track goes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're in. <laughs> we also had um, Alpine. Bit of a, a tale of two halves, actually, because the fact that Gasly came from twenty to nine. Yeah. Very good. Great drive. Like, who knows? Like, if he'd have qualified where Esteban qualified, who knows how close he would have been to that front four. Yeah. But obviously Esteban... Gives Alpine some hope as well in terms of pace because it didn't yeah. seem like it was really there in qualifying. But but whatever could have gone wrong did go wrong yeah. in the other side of the garage. It was, you know, it was Fernando getting all the bad luck last year. Mm, and now, now it's, it's off on. Swipped to the other side. Yeah. yeah. He was speed running how quickly he could sort of break the record for most time penalties <laughs> in a race. Yeah. <laughs> I know, genuinely, I think if that was an F1, like, 2022 race he's disqualified yeah. that amount of penalties I'm pretty sure you're gone like you get five pens and it's he just felt sorry for Lando being at the back he was like yeah. oh, you know, I'll, I'll come give you a race I, I just want someone to race yeah it was one of those that was really when Lando's engineer was like oh you can have a little bat with Ocon yeah. like P18 I bet Lando's like Cheer, great yeah chuff with that one give me some more air mm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but do you think like this is that's I think still a really big I think there's a lot of unknowns around Alpine and testing and I think in this race, because Gasly moved through the whole field, pretty much, apart from Bottas, and he was catching Bottas towards the end as well, and he sighed at the back. Mm. Like, I don't know if Alpine are closer to that top four or the, the rest. I have more questions than I did mm. before the race started. Agreed. About yeah. Alpine. It's hard to say of Alpine because if you look at just outright times in testing, then you'll say, oh, what on earth's happened? They've gone completely backwards. But if you look into it a bit more a lot of their testing was just spent trying to understand the setup of their new rear suspension they've got an entirely new rear suspension yeah so rather than go for outright lap time in testing they were like right look let's just do as much running as we can so we understand the setup of the car and how we work with this new rear suspension and then you have a race like today where you say well you know all right Gasly may have had a stinker in qualifying but he ended up p9 yeah but then knock on like you say he, he was speed running getting sent home so where are they in reality we you know we still don't really know but I, I don't think it's as bad as people think for Alpine no I, th I think Alpine will be I think they'll probably be fifth quickest car that's my early prediction what so that magical best of the rest <sighs> yeah I think they'll be quite comfortably in there for the me. field the field <laughs> head, of, head of the field and again it just makes Fernando's move look <clears throat> even more big brain than it yeah. it did before um, Haas as well 
stinker. Mm. Yeah. Underrated. Bit of a power. weird one. Yeah. Now, Hulkenberg look, had such a good, great qualifying. Yeah, but his front wing got broke, True. didn't it? So he had to come in to get that changed. Mm. And that kind of, especially when that happens at the start of the race as well, and you haven't had time to build gaps mm. in the field. Yeah, he was kind of slot in from the start, really. And then he got hit by penalty gate as well. Yeah, he felt end. left out. <laughs> <laughs> Ocon was getting all the fun yeah. in the stewards' room. So. Yeah. Yeah, not Magnussen. I don't even know if he was there. I think Magnussen finished where he started, basically, in yeah. 16th or something. Which is wild, considering four people retired. Well, how many points but. is it for P5? Because he... Um, so, he's... I think Hass in total scored like 37 points last year, and he scored 10 points just at that first race. Yeah. And, yeah. and that kind of carried them for the rest of the year. Yeah. Yep. yeah. And it's like, they've had a stinker at the start. I think the pay, like Hulkenberg Q3, you can't mm -hmm. like look past yeah, that. Yeah, no, I, I do hear that. I'm just concerned, because based off pace during a race, bars, um, <laughs> they looked like the team that was just a little bit adrift. Yeah. There was no movement. Like once Hulkenberg pitted, it was like, right. Magnussen like, wasn't able to make any progress. Yeah, which like, he did many... Like 10 seconds off the back of like the Alpha Tower. I think... I mean, we <clears> saw it during the race. It was a long train in the early stages. Mm -hmm. And I think that field is <laughs> so close uh, amongst everyone from, you know, after the Aston Martin, Mercedes. Yeah. Everyone down there is so close together that you have to be consistent and clean. And because of that front wing damage, it just cost them so much. Mm -hmm. like, had that not happened, I think he could have been fighting for a point at the back of it, I reckon. I reckon he could be around there with Albon and Sonoda for sure. Yeah. But realistically, did anyone actually have Haas down as like a, you know, top of the midfield table like team? Because no, it's Haas. No disrespect to them, but they, I, I, they are where they. I, I thought feel like, they would I be. thought the start of the season they'd be pretty good. They're traditionally good starters, isn't it? Yeah, they start well. They get like. 60% of their points in the first four Grand Prix it's, and then go on holiday. It's like, oh, what was it? When I was in year, uh, year nine and I did like a 400 meter. What was that, 1994? <laughs> I, <laughs> I did a 400 meter run and like I went out the blocks just the way too fast. And it was, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much it was. And the last 100 meters, I was just blowing out my ass. I was just, <laughs> I was dying and everyone else just like jogged past me. Mm. And they, I was just like, I just went too hard too early. going to be a story like when you was in year nine, you watched Graham Hill win the championship or something. Like, you know. <laughs> Should we get our IDs out and see who's older? Dan? I'm the oldest, <laughs> mate. I am old right. and haggard. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we haven't actually talked about, we haven't talked about Mercedes. Mid-Sadies. Mid-Sadies. Yeah. Really it's a weird one because they're better than they were at the start last year. I know they got a podium last year, but they kind of lucked into that. And they were miles yeah, off. Double, and then yeah, obviously yeah. Hamilton, as you said, was putting all the computers on his car in the world. So it's a strange one because they're still there, mm. but not there enough. It's like, it's almost like they've not moved, mm. but they also have moved backwards yeah. a tiny bit. Just, just purely because Aston Martin are there. Mm. It all depends on how long mm. they can hold up this ego of do no the no side pods work. <laughs> yeah. Because if... We all know they don't. But, that's the thing that they're looking at that and going, if it does work, then everyone else is playing catch up on them. Or do they go the route of everybody else? And then you're on the back foot and you have to then learn that car, redevelop it, yeah. catch up, and then try and re-overtake the team that are already doing that. Yeah. It's more well difficult. Just it now. So it's that tricky position, but there'll be one way or the other. It's looking like it's the Red Bull way that's going to be, that's how every car is going to look by the time we get to the next regulation change. Yeah. But yeah, it's all about that ego for them. Toto, it, all, all the Mercedes are waiting for is just for Toto to turn around and say, you know what, Christian was right when he said in Drive to Survive to change our fucking car. <laughs> Yeah. When when he when he okay, comes no. to accept that, then uh the side pods will return. Well, because apparently Toto has come out and said that this isn't gonna work long term. Which is I mean, it was reported by like Autosport and valid sources, so I'm mm. assuming it's which not great confidence for George and Lewis, I'm sure. That's what I mean. Like what's the cause again, like it wasn't that long ago that 
and, and again, for, for, from my understanding, the upgrades that they're going to bring in a few races time, they're not going to change the side pods completely. It's going to be an evolution of this current concept. Yeah, no. we're and it's like one more roll with the dice, maybe. Going from 0 0.5 side pods to 0 0.75. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I think they should do? Catch one half, one side of the car has yeah. a side Ooh, pod. Asymmetrical. And the other doesn't. Yep. Compare which side is for best. vibes alone. <laughs> NASCAR. I don't see how that would even help. Immediately just... after this podcast, I'm going to call Adrian and say, "Adrian, <laughs> I've got a fucking get plan. your sketch pad out, <laughs> <laughs> get your napkin out." <laughs> and that's uh, the, it, it's like for for Lewis and for Lewis and George. I do feel a bit for George because he went, he like he got his opportunity at Mercedes. Was like, oh, I'm going to Mercedes, and then their third best car last year maybe second by the end of the season and now they're here again it's like I know it's better than being in that Williams though still isn't it yeah, <laughs> yeah but he, when he was in the Williams race Valtteri was at year. the front in Mercedes so he, he was the only Mercedes driver to win a race last season as he my was. shaved yeah. face will attest to true it's grown back strong <laughs> for all you uh, really sorry have. audio listeners only yeah. you won't yeah. be able to see Dan's Lush beautiful beard. maybe if you rub your beard against the microphone uh, they can uh, hear it yeah look there you go ASMR beard action for you there that could be a YouTube first yeah ASMR beard <laughs> I'm move, sure that move over sure, uh, yeah. all the Twitch hot tub streamers <laughs> <laughs> it's over uh, that's what we should do at the end of the season somewhere do you reckon? Let's, do, let's do a hot tub stream for the mm. final race of the season we're not on that stupid kick are we of a streaming platform oh yeah uh, uh, that's the one that allows that anything goes on that anything yeah, yeah it's proper stuff. also coincidentally the sponsor how do you know that, that huh yeah you're a regular viewer on knowledge. that? Knowledge. Yeah. yeah. The knowledge of the industry. The finger is on the pulse. <laughs> on the pulse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. content creation <laughs> malarkey. Uh, no, no, I, I just, I think that Mercedes are not going to be in a title fight this year. I, th I think that's... No, but the W14 is a given, miles better than what the bloody W13 did at this True. point of the season. And yeah. it's not porpoising like mad. No. Yeah. Lewis hasn't got out on crutches or <laughs> no. back yeah. brace or anything. Oh, we're still yet to go to Baku though. So um, yeah, he hasn't had a hip replacement. You yeah. never know. But I, I think this is the thing. It's like, it, there's one, it's copying someone else's homework, but then also doing a better job than mm. them. Yeah. yeah you know, and that's yeah. the thing. It's like, bring on the black balls. All of the, that's it. All, all of the time that Red Bull were and Rasta Martin are, are refining, even Ferrari refining what they've already got. Mercedes are talking about changing what they've got. And then it's mm -hmm. like, and then you've got to actually be good at it as well. Yeah. And, and that's just because they're Mercedes and they've got that name and they've got these two really big high profile drivers does not guarantee anything. No, you know, the era as well with the cost cap and yeah. the tunnel and all that. Does they, are we going to be in a position where we have Mercedes basically right off this year so they can actually get it right for next year? Your mistakes are more punished. I think mm -hmm. you, you, in the cost cap era, you can't, if you, if you, if you cock up, then you can't just you can't just pay your way out one point seven yeah. billion at the car yeah. next year and just be sick. They like, can't Manchester City their way out of this one. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's weird. P just Mercedes FFP. Alfa Romeo deserves a mention. Bottas low key P eight yeah, man, um, which Quite. is what he did start of last mm. season as well. Just low key point scoring finishes consistently. That's eight yep. point oh. Just a quiet race for him, wasn't it? Just sort of no man's land. Wasn't in that yep. fight in the field he, he was fighting with um, Alonso and yeah he, when we he were, did get do you remember when we were bare yeah. confused yeah. and we were like how's he ended up here mm. he appeared, like really early and yeah. then got in that fight with, with George and Stroll yeah. for a little bit oh yeah it was Stroll yeah sorry Isn't that like sort of the story of Bottas's career though you just sort of see him <laughs> in a race and you're just like how's he ended up there yeah, yeah. like <laughs> man appears out of nowhere and he's yeah. in like a point scoring position like what yeah. the power of that mullet man it is yeah big up the mullet and again, I, I think that, you know, Joe didn't have a good race. He had a bad start, fell down to, through the field. Not not a good, like considering the the cl how close they've been in qualifying, mm -hmm. they were in qualifying, how, you know, testing. It felt like Joe was quicker than Bias most days actually in testing. He went quickest on day two, didn't he? Mm -hmm. as well. yeah. So it's like, the Alfa Romeo's clearly got good pace and again, Audi are starting to, they've already bought a 25% stake in Salva. So that's starting to come good. And I think their cars in, now that we've actually seen, you know, We've pulled everyone's trousers down and we know what look, we're looking at now. So, Well, this podcast is not how I remember <laughs> Have you ever watched um, Naked Attraction? It's kind of like that. You know? Naked Attraction? Yeah, oh, yeah. No, yeah, 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 yeah. You're you using for a team on? principal version of Naked Attraction. <laughs> oh, can we fucking not? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's got the biggest... Drive you know. to Survive next season. <laughs> I wouldn't put it faster. Uh, no, drive to Schlong. <laughs> Swung to survive. <laughs> Look, I, I, in my preseason, I put Alfa Romeo ahead of McLaren. Yeah. And from what we saw today, 
and again, like you look at the momentum and Joe's second season as well. I could, I could see that happen. Hannah McLaren, maybe if as long as they don't do what they did last year, which was go backwards, because I feel like McLaren have the potential to go forwards. Alfa Romeo is still, yeah. yeah, okay, Aldi have put a little bit of money into it, but it, it's still not there yet. Alfa Romeo easily had the worst drop off, I think, of anyone yeah. last season, and especially well. like Alfa Romeo are you know they're leaving it next year so is there going to be wow. enough money coming in i don't the know the money's leaving it next year yeah that's about it alfa romeo or say alfa romeo sauber is what they are if you peel the sticker off do have one of the most advanced wind tunnels going yeah but they've had that for a long time although they've not had the money no one else has built anymore utilize it yeah it's not until true. now you've got aston and mclaren building them red bull apparently are going to start building a new one yeah you think yeah. like most teams on the grid will have those facilities going forward, but well, I guess Alpha Tauri's a team we haven't spoken on yet. Mm. Yuki almost got into the points. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was actually quietly impressed by Alpha Tauri because I thought they were going to be shit. Mm. Uh, I yeah. generally thought they were going to be at the back. But I don't think anyone's um, going to be shit anymore. No, 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 because we because we have a field. Tom, yeah, have a midfield. We have a big, lovely we have a field, big, luscious green grass <laughs> field. Um, but yeah, no, I, Yuki obviously. BMP 11 <clears throat> right on the back of Albon um, yeah I think that was really solid that was, that was really good uh, obviously De Vries struggled in quali mm -hmm. got into a decent position but then was on the hard tyres what do we make of his first full race in a full season did okay in all fairness I think did better than I expected him to do would have liked to see them box him to softs just to see where I think maybe he could have finished ahead of the Haas because I think one of the Haas overtook him. I don't know whether Magnussen got him as, as, as well. Yeah. Because uh, they were on the softs at the end. So I think more impressed than I thought he was going to be, but I did write him off at the end of the day. So make of that one. It's my like under his, you know, under his helmet, you know, just start. Yeah. I still class him as a rookie. So I give him like five races leeway before I start judging too hard. Yeah. yeah. But I, I think, yeah, that, that's the thing. When you've got, you look at how close Sergeant, well, I think Sergeant for me was, like, Piastri wasn't able to, to showcase everything. But I think, yeah, Sergeant was the, the rookie of the day for me. I yeah. Think. yeah. Well, Piastri sure demonstrated his skills in pulling up into a pit box and turning <laughs> the car off. Yeah. Yeah. It's vital fine. skill sometimes, yep. you know. Yeah. I think he's going to be a vital skill <laughs> this year. I've got to say, oh, I do feel for Oscar. Yeah. It's, um, I've already seen some good memes on on Twitter about because uh, with the Williams being quicker than the McLaren as well, it's like, oof, it's not looking <laughs> not looking good, Brev. <laughs> Brev, not it really isn't. It's far from good. Shall we? Um, I think we, we talked about all the teams. I'm trying to think if we haven't there. haven't touched on. We think we touched on everyone mm -hmm. ever so slightly. Pause. We, um, <laughs> Basically, everyone's <laughs> mid. Everyone's washed. Every, everyone, yeah, <laughs> come back next year. Everyone's well finished. Done, Max. <laughs> we'll see you in 2024. Uh, Should we wrap up? Yeah, exactly. Should we wrap up with equal machinery? Oh yeah, go on then. Get involved. Should I, should I should tell, tell tell everyone watching what what what, what, well, is, what this is. Bloody ladies and gentlemen, um, equal machinery is the segment right at the end of the show. Um, where basically our producers allocate us a driver or a team or driver past and present, whatever. Uh, and we have to argue that in equal machinery, our driver would win, whether we believe it or not. And then at the end, we have to guess whether we actually truly believed what we were saying. Now, so, today's is a little bit different. Because all right. we've, not got a we've not got someone who turns wheel. We've okay. got someone who signs off budget, uh, I guess, maybe. Team principles. And build okay. engines in Fred Vassour's case. So, yeah, exactly. You've, Fred, you've got Fred to a. back this individual as if they would be the best with the same machinery in front of them. Yeah. Say they were yeah, all yeah. given... All the parts. Yeah. There, all the They're the given the keys. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, how, I have how well been... Turn it? I've been given Christian Horner. Ooh. Thank you. I was going to say. Thank you. Oh. Um, I'm happy with that one. Niran, you've got Zach Brown. Oh, I did you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. Dan, not looking good, Brev. <laughs> Dan, you've got Toto Wolf. Ah, oh. Toto. And Hayden, you've got Frederick Vasseur. Okay. Apparently, you just got on go by, by going by Frederick, not Fred. By the way. Really? Oh, so well, don't call him Fred. Fred. I do what I like, mate. So I'm calling yeah. him Freddy. Listen, <clears> when <throat> you build an engine, doesn't explode. Then I'll call you what you want. <laughs> so. so 
Dan, we're going to start with you because yeah, I make the rules. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, you one got, minute. Yeah, one minute to explain why Toto Wolf yeah. is clear of all those other team principles starting now. Right, easily. His surname's Wolf. That goes hard, right? Fair. Straight away. <laughs> all right, stop the time. Yep, done. <laughs> uh, he's obscenely rich through his business acumen. He's won eight championships, constructors championships in a row, which I think is more than like the record. Um, he's tall. <laughs> <laughs> he does a badass Arnie impersonation <clears throat> all the time. Yeah, true. And uh, he didn't overspend on catering. Like, <laughs> <laughs> is that I mean, it? Yeah, I think that's <clears throat> it. The stats speak for themselves. <clears throat> Eight championships in a row. Check Wikipedia. Bosh. Huh? Check Wikipedia. That's where all the stats are. Exactly. Yeah. Like Toto Wolf. <laughs> All right, all right, Toto is a bit weak, but Wolf, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, isn't Toto a dog in one of these, like... Yeah, yeah, the Wizards he's of Oz. He's got he's the dog, dog in it. Yeah. Oh, he has got that dog in yeah. it. Yeah. 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 That's a lot of a band, isn't it? You know? <clears throat> Toto. What, that, that, Africa. Africa. And Africa. Yeah, that's true. That is Toto. Don't get Oh, us. yeah, banger. Yeah, banger. stop yeah. it. You're going to get us uh, DMCA. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Throwing off the whole yeah. Africa did the live stream. All right. That was um, a bit of a community effort as well. Yeah, I feel like we all got behind you. Yeah, no problem. I forgot. I want to see you wax lyrical about Zach Brown for a Do minute. Do you? Is that, is that me? Is that what I want? <laughs> Are you ready? All right. Okay, good. Three, two, one. Good go. Now, look, listen. Is the name as cool as Toto Wolf? Probably not. However, what does one good self-respecting team need to earn money? Sponsorship. <laughs> Tablets on the side of yeah. the car. <laughs> That's what we're talking about around here. The finances that Zach Brown brings to the table. That McLaren looked like a, a blank whiteboard it when did. he took over <laughs> except it was orange, orange. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what i'm saying really he like he's a, on a roll let me let me land let, let me land cook, let cook. he looked uh, that that car was barren and now look they're sponsored by google chrome they need to they need, they need to google <laughs> how to get some more performance out of the car to be fair but overall <laughs> this guy brings unbelievable marketing capabilities to a team that was struggling for a long time Period. Period. Yeah, that's. Um, we don't need to talk about the results. And he's also made it results. slow enough that all the sponsors can see it as it drives past. Oh, that's oh, kind of him. Oh, that's hard. That was. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You know what? Actually, you know what I should have said. The art of the deal in terms of hiring drivers. I was going to say, yeah. He's, he's actually very he the good Trump at hiring. Of, is he the Trump of F1? He is. Yeah, he is. He just collects all the good young drivers. <laughs> so he is actually genuinely very sick of <laughs> Zach Brown's but, art Brown of the tower. deal. Yeah, just that's built a good car. Yeah, you can read it. it on the Amazon Kindles <laughs> yeah. in, in the car as it goes round. <laughs> just turns the pages as it goes along. Hayden. Frederick Vasseur. Frederick Vasseur. New Ferrari team good luck on this one. Well. Yeah. yeah, Frederick, <laughs> Frederick Vasseur. Go. Well, I mean, I'm pretty sure he won some championships with like ART <laughs> in F2, maybe. I hear that. No, yeah. name land. And then he went to Sauber. They were pretty shit before he joined. <laughs> and then they got good. Kimi Räikkönen was pretty much in a wheelchair and he got points and he had <laughs> Giovinazzi also in the team and they got points with him as well. So Yo, clearly he's, you're doing he's something. Jesus doing something well mm -hmm. with those two and he replaced Mattia Bonotto who is clearly the best team principal there's ever been so clearly that's you know there's a right choice there and that's all I really know about him to be honest he's called <laughs> Frederick is he maybe Swiss? Fred Freddy nice no, French Vassar. French yeah a little blue. I think that's French for Vaseline maybe that's <laughs> the win as well <laughs> Frederick <Yeah>. Vaseline <laughs> French that makes it so the car's bad. very lubricated then when it goes around the track yeah 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 yeah. yeah. so it's pretty good yeah. blows up but you know, as long as it's fast, it's still yeah, exactly. five Which it is Aiden. So who? So it's not. <laughs> Boy, but yeah, it's one and one record for Frederick Vasseur. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's his slogan. <laughs> Of course, that was really good. Good stuff yeah, there, It's, it's funny seeing you squirm, Hayden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I enjoy it. Yeah. I, I enjoy uh, it can we change his? Can we change his now from Christian Horner to yeah, be I feel like Horner? Like uh, 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 I'll let you decide who I want, should. I want Gunter Steiner, mate, personally. <laughs> yeah. I want Gunter Steiner. Dan, yeah. you got the casting vote. Oh, man, I really wish we could have had. Um, What's his name? Cyril Beatable back in... Cyril... Well, he's in we WRC now, isn't he? We have drivers from past and present. Why can't we have team principals from past and present? <laughs> yeah. I'll let, I'll let you guys decide between you, all right? Come on. There's three of you. Right. Who was Minardi team boss? <laughs> 2004. Franz, Franz Tost. Yeah. Franz, Franz, Franz Tost. Tost. All right. Yeah. Okay. The guy that Lewis Hamilton doesn't know who he is. 
Okay, yeah, okay, fine. I'll, I'll pay for that. Franz Toss, right, right, go. Um, Sebastian Vettel, uh, Max Verstappen, Carlos Sainz, These Daniel Ricciardo. These are all drivers who Impeccable owe wheel, their <laughs> success in Formula One to Franz Tost. He is the man trusted by Red Bull to bring their juniors through. Yes, Helmut Marco and Christian, they might be the ones to... Oh, yeah, you... But we'll pick you, but Franz is the one who develops them. You look at the progress of someone like Yuki Tsunoda, who really struggled in his first year of Formula One. Everything around, they brought him back to Faenza, and the tossed effect is alive and well. I also think he, I believe I read a story where he punched a driver or something back in like the mid 2000s, allegedly. allegedly. Um, double check for yourself on Wikipedia. Before we get cancelled. And um, <laughs> yeah, look, look, no, f for real, like tossed, he's, you know, in terms of taking this young talent and actually seeing it through and turning them into the next big thing like Max, like Seb, particularly like Ricardo, won, you know, eight races in total. Dumb bits. He does all right polishing a turd out of all the spare carbon he finds in Milton Keynes <laughs> bins. <laughs> Milton Keynes, yeah. <laughs> That was that good. They, did, they, they put they put the drivers who don't make it down like the bin chute. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. And then they're at the bottom. Yeah, yeah. Pierre yeah. Gasly Sage. sadly Sebastian made that trip. still down there. Oh, Boemi, yeah, yeah. Jeb, there's lots of <laughs> lots of names I didn't even mention. Who they might not be F1 drivers, but they've got F1 racing careers. Yeah. Um, and Danny Kvyat. Okay. <laughs> He's got a kid. Really? No, Danny man. Go now Max Verstappen's kid. But... Only man. Oh. Yeah. Awkward. Stole his seat. <laughs> <laughs> Stole his woman. <laughs> oh dear. Goodness gracious. <laughs> Never mind, eh? What life. You win effect. some, you lose some. <laughs> life. Life. <laughs> life. Uh, oh God. Life has its way of uh, oh, no. turning, doesn't it? Um, what do Daniel. we think then uh, of the of the arguments that we all made? I can't even remember Bro, you just talked about marketing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah well, what, I thought know. I was back at uni. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm Am I wrong? <laughs> Very much a big fan of Hayden's closing statement of Fred. <laughs> He's all right. He's okay. <laughs> the worst, sell, that uh, the worst yeah. political model of yeah, all yeah. time. Vote for me. I'm all right. Yeah. I mean, that's most of the government in the UK yeah. right now. Isn't <laughs> it? Yeah. Even that's a bit much to go on. I think... Tomo, mm. you sounded like you were reading a PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> <laughs> that's just, just knowledge. It's there. It's just there. Yeah. Wikipedia articles are all up there, mate. So... No, I think. Uh, do we like? I don't. Do we I don't to, actually do we believe. Have to decide on a winner. That, is that what we have to do? No, we just have to. Dis we have to work out whether we actually meant what we were saying. Yeah. Out did, of the four, do I? You didn't mean what you were saying. I, I mean, <laughs> I, I, what? Everything <laughs> I say, I believe. So. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I think you, yeah. I think you, do, I think you, 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 yeah. you had, I think Toto Wolf, you can make, there's good arguments to mm -hmm. make for Toto. There's mm. less of a track record for Frederick. Well, that's all I knew, and it wasn't very little. <laughs> I saw for a minute. I thought he was Swiss, <laughs> and he's not, apparently. So, out of the four, who would we say are the top two? Let's, let's, let's just do it like that, for real. If you could. Toto Wolf, Toto Wolf. Wolf. Toto Wolf. Yeah. Toto yeah. Wolf's definitely. Who top. else are we putting in there? Because Fred's. Fred's got experience, but Franz Toss has Franz got more Toss F1 is good experience. at what you said he is yeah. good at, but in terms of like... But he's not gone to a big team. Yeah, and Alfa so Tauri just kind that, of always been... a victim of his own success? Because they're like, you're so good at bringing this junior talent success. through. Yeah, yeah. Then, okay, yeah, exactly. He's like DJ Khaled. Yeah, yeah. DJ Khaled. You're Tom. just going to be basically a babysitter for Red Bull drivers. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I do always think about, yeah, I want, well, I don't always think about Franz Dost, let's be honest, but when you I do... Franz Dost doesn't always think about I Franz Dost. <laughs> I, I do, could he have achieved more if he'd have moved to a different team? And, you know, because he's been in that job for a long time time as well I think since was, they were Toro Rosso yeah was he in charge when Vettel won in Monza I when he was in I think Toro so Rosso? I feel like he was yeah yeah, yeah. yeah I can't I'm yeah, pretty sure he was, he was in charge wasn't he oh, was he uh, oh, yeah, point? Sure. I don't know whether it was when Vettel won but he was Who? in charge of Gerhard Berg was in charge of Toro Rosso at one point yeah he was you're right but I don't know when he was in charge of Gasly won at Monza so that's some, that's some knowledge there well done. the thing is about he's alright in my book Alfa Tauri slash Toro Rosso slash Red Bull in German slash Red Bull in Japanese. Whatever, whatever. they're going to be called next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's always Red Bull, but it's a different language, isn't it? The problem with them is it's just such a yo-yo team. They just end up all over the fucking grid. It's kind of hard to judge over a long period of time how good he is in terms of like getting results out of them. Because one season they're 
sixth, then they're ninth, then they're seventh. Then well, he's been yeah, employed for a very long time mm. by people that notoriously like to swing an axe if you're underperforming. So yeah. I suppose yeah, true, not bad, yeah, yeah, true. exactly. I still would mm. obviously pick Tuttle, a I mid-season think, right, but... TP swap. You yeah, know, that's not happened yet. <clears throat> yeah, for him to be in that position for as long as he has, and Lewis to still not know who he is, is quite impressive, actually, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, but, obviously um, hasn't pissed Lewis off. So no, the, there you go. Yeah, high praise everything. indeed. Yeah, That's yeah. it. No, underrated. I say Franz Toss is underrated, in my mm. opinion. Um, but there we go. Should we wrap it there, boys? Yeah, I reckon mm. so. I reckon so. Round one, Bahrain tick done. In the box. Have fun, lads. Thanks for coming on. Thanks Thank you for, for inviting us. us. Yeah. Yeah. Happy yeah. with what you saw. I'm happy with all the potential slander that you're going to get in your comments from everything we've said. So of yeah. course, yeah, no, as as always. All I know is that hopefully the F1 season can get better from here. Mm. Yes, right. Like yeah. If there's anything, I'd you can get better from a five rating on a race. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If a five out of ten isn't top of the range come the end of the season, <laughs> we'll take that. Decent. <laughs> well, where can everyone find us who isn't already? Although, if they're already listening, then they've, they've already, already found, found us. Already, yeah. Mm, yeah, congratulations. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> ourselves. Mm. Um, well, obviously, if you're watching on YouTube, then feel free to like and subscribe um, so you know when the podcast and when the shows are happening. Obviously, we do a live show for every single race. The podcast is out on a Tuesday. You can catch the clips on TikTok. You can catch the audio only on Spotify. We're on the Kindle on the side of the McLaren <laughs> side pods. Oh, that's sick. Yes, last night um, on the side of the yeah. McLaren. You Just a live feed of our faces on the car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Uh, we are on... What else? Your kitchen calendar. That, again, is audio mm. only. The UK uh, government's no-fly list. Yep, we're there. That's it. Yeah, we your are Your Samsung there. fridge. Yep, 1,000%. <laughs> the screen on the side. The Nokia 3310 in your bedroom drawer. Yeah. Big up. Yeah. Shout out. We're there. Back to our days. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. God, nostalgia. Snake, back and then it's just our days. flat underneath. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have yeah. to text to get a 50p ringtone oh, of the last lap. Days. You know when you get adverts for ringtone? Yeah, in the back that. of magazines. Yeah, yeah, back, yeah. Back dial up internet yeah. when it made that noise. Yeah. You're the IT man. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's that's it. It. Yeah, big up anyone still listening to this, by the way. <laughs> yeah, we are waffling. We're really waffling at this point. Mm. Um, yeah, catch us on your Excel spreadsheet. Catch you in a bit, guys. Enjoy. Have a Cheerio. Good Adios. We are done. Goodbye, everyone. Bye.